So you have taken an interest in making stop motion animations. Well, you came to the right video. Hi, I'm Blaine and today I will be discussing the essential materials and settings for making stop motion animations. You need your phone, stop motion studio, editing apps. Now, some of you may already have experience with editing and have a preferred app to use. But for those who don't and are just beginning to edit like at all and haven't even touched editing in their life, I recommend CapCut. It's totally free. Well, it has some pro features but you don't really need to acknowledge those. Other than that, it's very easy to understand. The UI isn't complicated. You can just, oh, okay, this does this, this does that. Next, you need something to use to hold your camera still while animating. Now, for some, they may not have a tripod lying around or money, but if you have Legos, you can look up Lego tripods and there's a ton of them. Sticky tack. These will essentially hold your figures down for you. Why did I make this? Of course, you need a place to animate. Now, a place that you're going to choose should meet these criteria. The space it has, which means can it fit your phone, tripod, and figure, or whatever you're animating, all in the same place with no issue at all. Comfort is very important, more than you think, because stop motion isn't a quick and easy task. It's hours upon hours of hard work for a good result. Because of those hours, make sure you have somewhere to charge your phone while animating. Because for some phones, sure, it could last for hours, but some phones aren't built the same. Lighting. Now, there's a general rule that everyone should follow for lighting. No natural light. Wow, hey, look you guys, the sun's rising! It fucks up the animations. For example, look at this animation I posted last year. Look at that natural light just ruin this fight scene. Artificial light is stop motion's best friend. But that doesn't mean you have to buy some expensive lamps. <laughs> expensive box lights no you can literally just use your house lights it's what i use and my animations turn out fine and yours will too now that we have the essentials out of the way let's jump into the important settings that you should prepare before making your stop motion animations if you tap the settings button on the bottom left part of the screen you will only need to take note of these settings shutter sound in short this is the sound effect that plays when you take a picture so you can enable or disable it if you're getting annoyed by it preview quality as the name suggests it changes the quality of your preview as per what a preview is i will get to it name this basically changes the name of your you know projects as they call it to whatever you set it to like automatically for me it's set to marvelous stop marvel marvelous animations nailed it <laughs> Inside your project, there is another settings button. Yay! <laughs> no, this is actually helpful. FPS or speed. This is basically the frames per second of your animation. Here in Animist's video, it showcases how these frame rates differ from one another. 8 is a more choppy but stylistic animation 12 has a more animated feel to it 
Meanwhile, 24 frames per second is the standard for animation production. I personally chose 16 frames per second because I feel like it gives my animations an identity that sets it apart from other animations. For instance, when you watch these two clips together, they have a different feel to them. They are unique yet so different in so many ways. So that's why in choosing an FPS or speed, it is completely up to you. Do you want smooth? Pick 24 or 30. Do you want somewhere in the middle? Pick 12. Do you want something simple? Pick 8. And it doesn't even have to be those numbers specifically. So have fun with it, experiment and try new things. After you have chosen your FPS or speed, you can go back to the settings in the home page, go to speed and choose the speed that you prefer. So it will be automatically applied to every animation or project that you will start. Aspect ratio. This is essentially the layout of your animation. You can choose any from these options and these transparent black bars will show how your animation will be cropped depending on what you chose. Preview quality. This is what I was talking about earlier. Preview quality is essentially the playback, what you will see as you are working on your animation. This part of the screen. Playback or replay. This is essentially your preference on how you would like your animations be replayed back to you. Play last frames only. This allows you to only replay the most recent frames that you have finished, rather than replaying the entire animation. Loop playback. It loops the replay. That's it. Include live in playback. This helps you check if the frame that you have not captured yet fits well with the rest of your animation. Add a pause at the end of playback. It adds a pause at the end of your playback that lasts 3 seconds. Now, once you click a frame, you have options laid out in front of you. Insert cam. Self-explanatory, it inserts your camera anywhere you insert it to. In case you like forget to do a scene that you're about to animate in a specific place. Once you're done doing that, you can send it back to the end. Pause. As the name suggests, again, it will pause a frame that you have chosen for however long you set it to. Edit. This transfers you into a different screen. Here, when you press plus, you have some options. Draw. As simple as the name is, it lets you draw. For me, I use this for webs or some special effects. Fun fact, you can also use this as a budget erase feature. Basically, if you remember the background or if your background is a solid background, like in this animation, you can hide your hands or stands. Face. This is really useful if you really want to make your character speak. I usually don't use this because this is very time consuming. You have to add a mouth sticker per syllable or letter that you say. Like this in Robot Chicken but an, instead of paper cutouts, it's digital. This is mainly used for people who do Lego stop motion animations. As you can see, it has Lego custom faces, which you can use for blinking, looking, emotions, speaking, and etc. Which, as you can see, can be resized. In the edit option, there is this erase feature. If you have this feature, this is how you use it. Basically, you should have two frames, one with the object and one without the object, which is just your background. Before you start erasing, your background frame should be under your object frame. Once you're all set, tap the frame with the object, click erase, then erase the stand or the hand that you don't want to be in that shot. 
Once you're done, you can go ahead and delete your background frame. Select. This is basically for mass edits you wanna do, like cut which basically deletes these frames, copy and paste if you want to repeat a frame or multiple frames, and you can also reverse the frames that you have selected. Press the settings button on the bottom right corner of the screen. Next, click the button with the letter M on it and click P. This will help you have full control over your camera with easy to understand settings. Press the AW button. This contains all the types of lighting you can have. You can choose any from these options except for AWB which is auto white balance and the lock button. The button with a sun on it is the exposure button. This will set how bright or how dark your picture will turn out to be. These two very important settings will prevent lighting changes and flickering issues. That square looking thing with the circle in the middle is focus. It's your camera focus and you can adjust it by using this scroll wheel or by tapping the object or background that you want to be in focus. And the last button is zoom. And the slider on the left is for onion skinning. This feature helps you align your previous frame to your next frame. This will prevent disjointed or disconnected movement. So make sure to always utilize this feature, like how I utilize it in this animation. That play button will give you a quick replay of your animation. It won't replay the whole thing, only the most recent frames that you have taken. Back button. This will put you back into the project settings page. This is where you can adjust and delete frames that you think are out of place or jarring in your animation. And lastly, timer. Here, you can set a timer similar to a normal camera timer. This will take a picture for you automatically and will continue to do so unless you stop it. So now that you have the essentials and the settings, what are my tips for you before you start animating? First off, have a container that has all of your accessories ready. So you won't have to take too much time trying to find that one hand that you need for this one frame, which can cost you a lot of time. This will help you stay organized and neat. 2. Have a notebook or a different device where you will plan out your animation. This will give you a clear idea on how your animation will play out, which will speed up the animation process and editing process. For example, here are the scripts for some of your favorite videos. I just really like her and I don't know what to say to her. Just go up to her, man. Just go up to her. What? Just say anything? Say anything. Okay. Your ass makes me forget about my dead parents. Guys, there's a bomb on the train! Obama's on the train? No, a bomb! Oh, good. I fucking hate Obama, but I'm not racist or anything. I am. Yeah! Wanna do something foolish? You even have to ask. What I said was true from a certain point of view. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And that concludes episode one of this new series called A Beginner's Guide to Stop Motion. If you have any questions, comment them down below. I will be reading and answering all of them on QBA, questions about animations, which will come out after every episode. Episode two will be about mistakes that you may be making in stop motion. So slam that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any new uploads. Once again, I'm Blaine, and remember, Uncle Ben once said, Just try to breathe. I, I, I can't. You're kneeling on my balls. Oh, sorry. Rick, listen. With great power comes... Great responsibility? I, I was going to stick with bitches, but if you want to be a virgin for the rest of your life... Whoa, what?